Greetings to United States, to India, to Greece, Serbia. So far, welcome to another broadcast. Uh, we will start next webinar. Uh, we, we all hope we are about to finish with the crisis and preceding crisis that uh, we were uh, all in the world, we were passing uh, through uh, last month. As any crisis, this uh, set up uh, different questions. This make us a little bit afraid of what we'll be uh, doing, what will we uh, after that? Will we go successfully through the crisis, stay on the way to, to our targets or not? Usually what we ask is, how's the market? But maybe in this situation, more proper question will be, how am I? How are you? Because the market is different. And we were having a guest in one of previous webinars that made his company successful in the just previous crisis in 2008. So the crisis is sometimes the way to start a success. But the question is, how am I? When I'm in some challenging situation and always uh, remember the uh, movie Untouchables, when Jim Malone asked Elliot Ness, what are you prepared to do now? So I think the right question will be, what am I prepared to do when the crisis comes? And to ask ourselves, even when there is no crisis, what am I prepared to do? Am I ready to do something special? Something extraordinary? Am I ready to achieve to be a national champion in whatever? Or to treat our business like being in some kind of special forces? Not necessarily military or police special forces, but special forces in our job. One of my previous guests named his company Real Estate Sales Forces. He accept his company like some kind of forces and he made a successful company. Am I prepared to be a world champion or to do something to go to Guinness World Record, to set a new Guinness World Record, or to train the special forces? Whatever that is extraordinary to do successful business. If I am ready and set up my mindset to do that, so many people do it. The right question to ask somebody, is it possible what I have to do? How do I have to set up my mindset to accept the big goals, to accept that I can achieve it? So such a questions are necessarily the founding of making success. And who too should we ask to tell us about experience in the, uh, achieving this? Maybe somebody who did it, who is a natural champion, national champion, for example, national champion in bodybuilding in Australia, or to achieve to be in Guinness book because he make a Guinness world record or to train the special forces, really training special forces. And I'll uh, invite all of these people, but all in one. His name, my guest is John Templeton. And he has all of this. He has achieved all of this. He is the number one life coach in Australia. He is a Guinness World Recorder. He's a national champion of Australia. And he's a young guy. And today, our guest. Hello, John. Hey, hey, everyone. Thank you for accepting my invitation. And in such a special time for I us. Know. Yeah, it's a midnight there. So good evening. It's 10 past midnight. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we want to ask you how's tomorrow? And what tomorrow's, we, tomorrow's good. Tomorrow's what should good. we do today? to make tomorrow more, more successful? You've, the next hour is important. 
that's what that's what you need to do today to make tomorrow better is pay attention for the next hour okay so uh when i was listening to you i was impressed by your energy mm -hmm. and by that as i see i don't know how old are you but uh, you are a young guy guess how old i am guess yeah and you achieved all of these things i said how old do you think i am so Kadeza. it is possible how old do you think i am uh how old uh, do i think i think i'm 45 something like that me yeah everybody if you can go in the chat box and i want you to type in how old you think i am okay type in how old you think i am <laughs> i make Into you older <laughs> but I make you older but, because but, of all of this all of this uh... i don't want you i don't want you to press enter I, okay you're all pressing enter that's all right just keep pressing enter <laughs> let's see it let's see it uh raj you're typing jazz jasmina if i pronounce anything wrong i'm sorry yeah, isabella that's, that's right milan type it in i'm i'm curious also, if you see me, I, I, I know the camera's there, but if you see me looking down, it's because your beautiful faces are here, okay? Um, all right, yeah, we're all about right. Nobody gave we're you about more right. than 38. Well, you said 45. Yes, I wanted to, make, to <laughs> challenge you. <laughs> How um, is it no. possible to achieve all of this and being <laughs> such uh, young as you? Um, dedication hard work focus so um first off thank you for the introduction and thank you for the opportunity to come and speak with your your friends um everybody also can you just type in the chat box whereabouts you are in the world and what the time is where you are in the world and what the time is i'm going to type it in as well ah So everybody put in chat box, where are you from? Serbia, Chicago. How Chicago? Do you know what? Wait, where's, where, is it Natasha? I don't know if it's pronounced right. It is. I watched, um, I've just watched the documentary. Have you watched the Michael Jordan documentary? Yes, the Last we, Dance? Yes, we did. <laughs> you should watch it. It's really cool. And it's that, like, for me, I was like, well, this is Chicago, the Chicago Bulls. Um, Boston. Milan is in Serbia, Serbia. Another one in Serbia. Cool. Is, am I, am I going to pronounce this right? Like, D D D G G Diana D Gina Dina Dina Gina Gina That's Gina. Gina You know John okay. I uh, I will uh, do something for you I will teach you a reading Serbian in less than 10 minutes That's one of okay. my courses uh, nearly 100% successful so I next time I learn you to uh, to read Serbian in less than 10 minutes Yeah that would be good. And uh, you know what? I've been working with a lot of people from South Africa recently too, and I cannot pronounce their names very well. But anyway, let's talk about why we're here. Money and how to make money. Is that why we're here? I'm curious. Is that, is that why we're here? We're not? We are? I mean, you're allowed to say no. Is it, isn't it happiness? What I, want you, what I want you to do is type in the chat box, and, and that's everyone. Type in the chat box what you think we're here for but this is this is what you do this time don't press enter type it in and then i will say go and then you press enter and we'll all do it together okay so type it in but don't press enter yet okay so the question is why why do you think we're here type it in
Okay, when you're ready, I want you to press enter and they're all going to pop up, aren't they? Growth. Nat Natasha, you didn't, what's going on? Success, financial freedom. To make money. Am I right seeing two Raj screens? Is that normal? Can you see two Raj screens? Raj. Yeah, that's Raj. But two screens? Why two screens? Oh, he was on two screens, uh, I suppose, Raj. Because uh, he used the mobile, I suppose, and uh, two, two devices. Okay. There he is. Team, I would love to see your face. I would love to see your face. Hi. <laughs> there it is. Gina. Okay, so. All right. Yes. Faces. Here we go. Today. So, Milan, Isabella, if we could see your faces, that would be amazing. So, have I got this correct that everybody is involved with real estate here? Is that correct? Yeah. Uh, mostly. Ma big majority ah there's everybody's faces okay so for this to work for this whole conversation to work i need your interaction so that means if i ask a question you type it in and also there are four hand signals four hand signals we need to know this is yes this is no this is maybe a little bit unsure and this is can anyone guess what this is? It's like, it's like, fuck yes, definitely hundred percent. Okay. So if you give the double thumbs up, that's, that's big commitment. So what we're going to talk about is really how to unlock, unlock another level from inside yourself, especially when it comes to creating wealth. So what I want to do, if it's okay with you, I would just like to share my story. I know, um, my introduction was, you know, was quite long, quite lots going on, but I just want to talk in the realm of wealth creation. So I grew up in a very um, lower middle class family. I've actually got a picture of my dad's flat where we used to live. And there was this wooden table, everything. So, so, so my parents split up, my mom took everything and my dad first moved home when he was 40 years old. And then got, a, got this tiny apartment and it had no like carpet or tiles. It was like concrete floors. And he had a borrowed wooden um, table in the kitchen, borrowed fridge. And on the table were bricks and on the bricks was a borrowed stove and the bricks were there. So the wooden table wouldn't light up. And there's a picture of us all sitting around it. And I remember looking at it and, you know, my dad has this picture on the wall to re like remind himself where where we all sort of started and so we used to have foster children stay with us all the time just for extra money um and i always remember going to school and all of my clothes everything were always hand-me-down clothes they they were never new i was always um borrowing stuff i the upbringing we didn't have money straight pretty straightforward and <clears throat> Uh, that carried on and and my life i got expelled from school when i was 16 i was taking lots of drugs just being a bad kid and i joined the army and i joined the army because my friend we were all taking drugs and my friends um and i were taking like methamphetamines and a few of them started to commit suicide and that's when i realized i was like this is this is gonna lead me to the most screwed up future and so i joined the army and so I was a rebel. I was a rebel kid. And um, I went to East Timor and I served seven months in East Timor. And whilst I was in East Timor, I was getting paid um, like average, but I wasn't spending money because I didn't have to pay for rent because we just had tents that we slept in. And the food um, was supplied ration packs. It was pretty average, but it was supplied. So I didn't have to spend money on food or rent. So I saved up. and. And after seven months, I was going to go back to, uh, back to New Zealand. And I want to know, like, what do you think 
Uh, so I was 20 when I left to go to East Timor. I was 21 when I came home. I'm curious. What do you think a 20, 21 year old, just say they had saved up $50,000. What do you think the typical 20, 21 year old would spend that money on? I'm curious. So I want you to drop it in the chat box and then hit enter when you're ready. And let's see what you think. And Donna, if you can hear me, can you turn your screen on, please? There's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, you can, Donna. You can. There is no judgment here. Spent it on a trip. Isabella, are you typing right now? Or are you thinking? What's going on in there? Business. Buy a car. Okay. So, here's what happened. I... I saved money and all I wanted to do this, I'm, I'm a 20, 21 year old and um, in the military, we drink a lot of alcohol and we party a lot. And it is all about having a flash car, having the big sound system, big TV, um, big stereo system. So that's what I wanted to do. All I wanted was to buy a fast car and have the best car and be the coolest. I wanted to be cool. And so that was my plan. And what happened was over in East Timor, there was not much to do. If we were out patrolling, then we were at the base and we would just read books and train. And my friend said to me, he brought me this book and he said, hey, you should read this. And it was about money and investing. And I said, I'm not interested. I was like, I don't want to read about that. I want to read bodybuilding magazines war magazines that was where my life was but anyway eventually i read this book and this it was so straightforward this book ultimately said spend your money on things that go up in value that was it and i was like oh, a car doesn't really go up in value a big tv a big stereo they don't really go up in value and so i was like this really challenged my beliefs of what I should be doing with my money. So anyway, I decided to listen to what the book said. And I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invest in a house. I'm going to invest in a property. So I got back to New Zealand and I, I had no idea what I was doing. Remember, this is just a 21-year-old kid that loves drinking, expelled from school. But I fumbled my way through it and I bought a house. Now, for six months, I drank alcohol. We smashed the windows in the house, we were just wild, ruined the carpet, everything. And I had to pay the bills, I had to pay the electricity, and it was so stressful. All I wanted to do was have freedom so I could, so I could party and have fun. And so what I did, I went to the real estate agent and I said, I want to sell this house, it's too much hard work. And I said, at the point I was so, I was so stressed out, I said, I don't care if I lose money, I just want to not have these responsibilities. And he said, okay, we'll sell it for you, but I think you're actually going to make money on it. And I said, you know, that would be great, but I don't care. And I said, if it makes money, this is what I said. I said, if it makes money, I said, you can take the profit. I was like, I just don't want to know anymore. And anyway, the house sold really quickly and I made $30,000. Okay. So this was a kid who had no idea ruin the house. I literally got paid $30,000 to get drunk and trash this house. Okay. This is how crazy investing is. But what I learned was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. If it's possible for me to do this by reading one book and to do this and to make more money uh, by doing nothing, I, I was like, what else is possible? So I started reading about real estate and I started studying it. And I used that money and I put it back into another property. And then 
another one and another one. And it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew from there. And then I used that money to start businesses and I grew the businesses and I've sold multiple six figure businesses now. And so through this chain of events, I realized that before I read that book, before I got that information, my life was heading on this direction. And this direction was not one of abundance, not one of prosperity. And just by gaining this wisdom, all of a sudden my life took this direction here. And I thought, well, what is it? Like, what, what is it that created that, that change? And it really came down to education. It really came down to education first, first and foremost, but then taking um, action. And this is where a lot of people muck up. Do you agree that there's information everywhere? Who here has read, who here has read tons of real estate books? I'm curious. How, how many people read real estate books pretty often? Yeah. So that, remember, this is yes, this is no. Yeah, pretty much. Sometimes. Okay. There is information everywhere. There's YouTube. You can find the information. But where people um, tend to get stuck is on taking action. So they know what to do. Like we all know what to do, but we don't take action. And I want to know like, why? Why don't we take action? And so I want you again to type in the chat box. What do you think it is that stops people from taking action? So again, type it in the chat box. And press, don't press enter. Don't press enter. We'll do it. We'll do it again as a team. What is it that stops people taking action? Because we all know what to do. The information is out there. So why is everybody not wealthy? Okay, and then when you're ready, press enter and let's see what you think. So I'm also curious, I'll just ask the question. You don't have to type this in. You can just show me with your hands. Who here, who here is an employee? I'm curious, who's an employee? Just give me a thumb up if you're an employee. Who here is, cool, who here is self-employed? Thumb up if you're self-employed. Cool, number of. And who here owns property? Who here currently owns property? How many? One, two, three, four, roughly five, one. Cool. Couple, two. All right. Good. So people pretty much nailing it, right? People have fear and, and too much risk. So the next thing I'd like to know from you is, and I want everyone to reply because some of you are really slack and I will call you out. Um, what's, what's, what do you perceive to be your obstacle? What do you perceive to be your obstacle? So I'm, expe I'm, I'm expecting everybody to answer. What's your obstacle moving forward from here? When you're ready, you can hit enter and, and I'll just read through each person's where you're currently at. Uncertainty of markets. Limiting beliefs. Konstantinos, can you, I hope I said that right. Can you turn your video on? Man, people love hiding. Oh. Okay, we've got two answers in. I'm waiting on one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven more. Is that telling something as well as people are hiding, scaring to say something or to be visible? I mean, is that is that normal that people don't speak much or or write much? Well, usually this was not much interactive because uh, usually we we give uh, some presentations and after that talk. So this is the first time to make it uh, really interactive. Oh yeah. Totally, we have to interact. I need to know as well where we're at before before we move it move on. So who are we waiting on? So Gina, nothing is stopping you currently. Milan, are you with us? Are you writing? Jasmine, you, we haven't heard from you either. There we go. Now we've got everyone. Okay, so what I'm going to do What I want to do is Jasmine written yet? Nothing can stop you. <laughs> Good. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about values and beliefs. Values and beliefs. Who who thinks they know what values are? Remember, this is yes, this is no, this is maybe. Who thinks they know what values are? Okay, we're all confident. Drop, drop in the chat box, drop in the chat box what values are. But this time, make it quick. Otherwise, we're going to be here all fucking night. Type it in, what you think values are. Do not press enter, but just type it in, and then I'll give you a countdown. We press enter, and we move on. We need to speed this, we need to speed this up now that we're all here. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hit enter. Let's see what values are. Ethics, personal. Okay, so here's the new definition. Values are values in life are anything we deem to be important. Anything that is important to us would be classed as a value. Okay. So what I want and, and, and they would be like our core values or our towards values. And what that means is a towards value is something we move towards in life. So some people wrote honesty and integrity. What I want, what I want, um, so those would be core values. What I want to look at tonight is towards values. So that when I say, what do you want? What do you want in life? What is important to you? And what do you want in life? These are towards values. So what I want you to do is I want you to list six things, six, let's do 10, list 10 things that you want in life or that is important to you in life to move towards. So things like honesty and integrity, Generally, you don't move towards them. They're things you hold to be true. They're things you hold to be important. But I want to know, so a towards value, for example, could be health. It could be love. It could be relationships. It, it's things you kind of want to move towards that are important to you. So I want you to list 10 towards values. 10 towards values. <clears throat> Type them out. And then do not press enter. I'll give you the signal.
Are you ready? Three, two, one, go. If you haven't finished them, that's all right. You can keep typing. Cool. <clears throat> And you can read through each other's as well. And so this is how I want you to think of values. Imagine that all of us went out for dinner and we went to a buffet restaurant. So it's all you can eat and there's just every food you can imagine. But you've only got one plate. And so you go up and you put the foods that you want on your plate, the foods you like on your plate, and you come back to the table. And if we looked at everybody else's foods around the table, would you agree that everybody would have, everybody's plates would look different? Would you agree or would you disagree? Agree? They would all look different? All right. And that's purely, we, we all like different foods. We all have different tastes. Some people go straight for the ice cream and some people go straight for the pizza. And we, we just prefer different things. And those values, those things, the, the foods that we value over other foods, that's what makes us unique, right? But if you look at someone's plate and they've got pizza with ice cream on it, and you look at someone else's plate and they've got, you know, chicken with some vegetables. You can tell a lot about that person's life. You can tell a lot. If the person with pizza and ice cream on one plate, if that's what they go to, that's what they value, that's what's important to them, their life's going to, their health is going to be pretty sloppy. And the person with the chicken and the vegetables, their life is going to be pretty healthy. And so the same is true. When, when I see people's values, I straight away tell someone how ultimately how successful their life is going to be. And the way values work is they, they dictate our decisions. For example, let's have a look at some here. If health. So, all right. Let's look at Natasha. Let's just use Natasha as an example. In fact, Natasha... Can, um, can we unmute you? Can you unmute yourself? Okay. So you've got health, financial freedom, success, motivation, relationship, love. Can you, order, can you put those in order for me from one? I think you've got six there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can you put them in a hierarchy? I, uh, actually, I think I already did. <laughs> put so them that's on. the hierarchy there? Well, yes. And I have noticed that as I'm getting older, actually health is now number one. When I was in my 20s, actually, <laughs> this was not <laughs> the first on the list. So now I'm putting it first on the list. <laughs> and what made but you change it? love should be more up. What did you say? Love should be more up, I think. Why well, actually I'm putting it behind. Why? Why the love? Yeah, first time I see the love is on the last place. Maybe there are more important things in life. I don't and know. So, and uh, so, I, I, when what, I was in my 20s, I was putting love first. What, what made you put health? What made you put health up? Well, because now, I mean, you must work for it. And uh, when I was in my 20s, I, d I didn't have to work for it. It was just there. <laughs> and so and did you... you must, I mean, you, you must pay you, attention to how you live you your life. Mirror? Did you look in the mirror and say, I need to get healthy? Did you... No, 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 I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, sick. But, uh, for example, you must pay attention. Uh, I mean, if uh, you are eating healthy, if you are... Uh, doing exercises, if you are living a healthy lifestyle, then you are healthy. If not, the things change. But, but Liz, what, made, what made you go, health is important now? Something must have gone through your head and you went, health is important now. 
inspired uh, actually you know, uh, when I was uh, for years for example you go we go to annual uh, checkup and uh, for example you go and then suddenly you see everything is not normal oh you must adjust something here and then I realized oh now I have to work for it in cool. if I don't want to take medication and uh, uh, make things right so okay so and i perfect. don't i prefer not thank to you. take medication <laughs> i prefer work for it <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing so team i want to explain how values work and how important it is that our values are in alignment with our with with our goals and our dreams for our life because if we look at natasha for example um if like health is at the top right right now that's her priority relationship is number five okay so that means that means donna are you paying attention okay good girl that means that if natasha is faced with a decision i can either go to the gym or i can go on a date or meet someone new in her brain the way she organizes it and prioritizes it is I'm going to go to the gym. Okay. And so you can imagine, am I right, Natasha? But uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to the gym every day now. <laughs> That's okay. No, no, no. Just, just a healthy option. It could be food. It could be, it, it's anything that prioritizes health over relationships. And so, if whenever we are making decisions, we make decisions based on our values and it's in a hierarchy. So if health is higher than relationships, that means when we're faced with the decision, we go, eh, I'm going to go and be healthy. Whether it's the gym, whether it's um, walking on the beach, whether it's eating good food, we prioritize that decision. And so I can look at the values you've written now and I can see whether you're going to be wealthy i can see whether you're going to um have a loving relationship i can see if you're going to be healthy purely by the way in your mind you prioritize what's important to you and here there are two ways can you guys hear me okay okay there are two ways in which there are three ways in which values can really screw us up the first way is this. The first way is I want to create financial freedom, but it's not near the top of my list. It's like number four or five or six. Because what it means is that we're always going to choose other things before financial freedom. Okay. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So if financial freedom is, is, is like fifth or sixth, it means health, family, all these things come first. So instead of, if we've got 24 hours in a day, instead of reading um, eight hours of books on financial freedom or, or, or planning financial freedom, if financial freedom is fourth or fifth or sixth on the list, it means first we spend time with family, then health, then um, all these other things before we get to financial freedom. So you can imagine that if there's someone like myself that spends a lot of time of the day creating wealth, and then I have someone else who values wealth, but it's down the list underneath all these other things, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to generate more wealth because I'm just dedicating more time, more of my life, more of my decisions are in alignment with wealth. Does that make sense? So that's the first way people can mess up. They want something, but their values are not in alignment with it. That's the first way. The second way is when they have two values that are almost opposites. And an example for this would be, I want to create wealth, but I also love spending my money on travel and adventure. So it's like traveling full time, 
could cost a lot of money. Would you agree? But also investing takes a lot of money. So all of a sudden, your values are where you put your resources, time, money, energy. And if you've got, if you've got resources being split, money being split, all of a sudden, instead of 100% effort going into one, you're going 50-50. And that dampens your efforts. Does that make sense? Cool. So that's the second way that having values non-alignment can hold us back from creating you know, financial freedom and wealth. And here's the third way. We've got what's called away from values. So we've got towards values, which you've all written, but we also have away from values. Away from values are things you don't want in your life, okay? Things you don't want. And I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. I want financial freedom. Someone wrote it before, a number of people did. I want financial freedom, but I don't wanna lose my money. So imagine you get an investment opportunity and you're like, man, I really want to invest because I want financial freedom, but I don't want to lose my money. And so you're stuck. Do you invest or do you not invest? You, you're going toward the investment and financial freedom, but you're also going away from losing all your money. And so we get stuck. This is people on the fence. This is what it looks like to be unsure of what to do. It happens in relationships. I want love. I want connection. I want intimacy, but I don't want to be heartbroken. Or, but I don't want commitment, but I don't want to lose some of my freedom. Who's experienced something like this before? There's something you want, but in going after it, there's also something you don't want that comes with it. I'm curious. Yep, a couple have. Natasha, you don't think you've ever experienced that? You're unsure? We've all experienced it. Otherwise, your whole life would be perfectly exactly the way you want it. <laughs> Everything would just be like, oh, I want that, got it. Oh, I want that, got it. So think of it like this. I'm sitting in a kayak, like a canoe, and I'm on the edge of a lake, and on the other side of the lake is a tree. And I want to go across the lake to that tree to have a picnic. That's what I want to do. And so I'm sitting in my kayak, and I've got my paddles, and you know the rudder in the kayak is, is you know the rudder on a boat it's underneath the surface it's underneath the surface but it's it's lined up straight with the with the with the canoe or the kayak so it keeps you going straight when you paddle instead of you twisting <clears throat> now we're in control of the paddles and we can paddle the direction we want to go so that's like the goal setting the future we want i want to go over there and have a picnic under that tree now, if the rudder on the kayak, on the canoe, was slightly twisted, what would happen when you start paddling? All of a sudden, yeah, you're just going to go off in this weird direction, and you're going to kind of do circles. And you know what happens? You have to try really, really hard to go straight. So as I'm going across the lake and my rudder's twisted, it's not easy. It's, it's, it's hard work. You can get there, but life's tough like it is hard work and that's what happens when our values which are unconscious we don't even know what they are a lot of people don't even really look at their values very often and quite often they're twisted to the side and people wonder man making money is hard financial freedom's hard but the truth is they're subconsciously they're just aimed in the wrong direction does that make sense Okay. And so do you think it would be important to get alignment? Do you think it would be important to get alignment of your values? So that they're all stacked up, so that they're all pointing in one direction. <clears throat> right? Cool.
So what we need to do, we need to look at, we need to look at our values again. We need to look at the top 10, about the top 10. They're the ones that really affect our lives. And we need to look and see if any of the three problems with values are present in our top 10 values. Remember one is our goal is, is literally not aligned with our values. So our values could be, this happens all the time. Family is the top value in the whole world, okay? Well, pe culturally it is. So it's like family, um, happiness. There's all these values around um, connection, friendship, uh, adventure. Blah, blah, blah. And people are like, I really want more money. I really want financial freedom. I really want abundance. And I look at their values and it's not there. So that's the first thing. Is wealth creation, is abundance, is, if you call it success, like financial success, is that in your top couple of values? That's the, that's the first way values can screw us up. The second thing we need to look at when we look at our top 10 values are, are any of them pulling apart in opposite directions? And I'll speak about a little story. So when I was in the military, in fact, it's part of the story you've already heard. I loved drinking and partying. I loved it. It was, it was, it was me um, just getting wrecked every weekend. But I also, there was part of me that wanted to, um, you know, build, build, get this house, build, build wealth. And I was torn. I was torn. So I literally, partying was a higher value than wealth for me. So I decided to sell the house. I decided to sell the house because partying was more important. So my values were pulling me apart. But what happened was when I saw the $30,000 come in, my values changed. I went, wow, wow. I actually had belief in myself now. And then my values shifted and I started less drinking, more um, investing. Another time in my life was when I was trying to become um, New Zealand bodybuilding champion. I loved partying and drinking and I was stuck. You know, on the weekends, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, do I go partying and drinking or do I eat healthy, sleep and train? And so I want you to look at your life, look at your values and go, this is what I want. <clears throat> this is what's important to me. Are any of those things pulling away from each other? In fact, do you, you can put your hand up. Does anyone think they have a conflict of values it's known as does anyone think they have a conflict of values anywhere in their life no so here's another way to look at it 24 hours in a day 24 hours in a day let's say you sleep for eight 16 hours left of those 16 hours how many of those hours are spent living your dreams and then how many are spent doing all the other bullshit because if you've got bullshit in your life then you've got values that are out because you're, you're you're doing something you're you're literally making a decision to do something that is not your dreams. Okay. So when you look at people who are, are majorly successful, out of those 16 hours, they're doing what they want. They are living by their values. That's fulfillment. When you're living by your values, you're fulfilled. And so when we can fully 100% be living in our values, we're fulfilled. Anything other than that, we're out of alignment. We're out of alignment with ourselves. And remember the third way that values can screw us up. The third way is I want that, but I don't want the thing that comes with it. I want that, but I don't want the things that come with it. So what I want you to do, I want you to type in the chat box over the last 30 minutes, just something that maybe has entered your mind, which you didn't know something that's entered your mind, which is uh, reconfirming something or maybe something that's entered your mind that you're gonna dive deeper into later. So just type it in the chat box and then press enter when you're ready.
<clears throat> Whilst everyone else is typing, um, does anyone have any questions? If you've got a question, wave your hand and I'd love you to come off of mute so we can talk more. Is everyone still typing? Donna is, are you still typing, Jasmine? Nice. So let me talk into motivation because Natasha kind of asked, how do you find motivation? <clears throat> this is, so motivation is, is ultimately done by two ways, two ways. Either life is painful and we don't like the pain. And so we work as hard as we can to get out of the pain. Or it's pleasure. I want that thing. I want that thing so badly. That thing would be awesome. So I move towards it. So we're either moving away from pain or we're moving towards pleasure. I want that. So when it comes to most people, most people are comfortable. Most people, their lives are too fucking comfortable. So there's no pain to get them to move. And there's also like life's good. So they're not really, they don't, they're not really looking at, at, at what else is possible. And so people just get way too comfortable. And so if you find yourself being comfortable, I would say this, I would say, look at the problems in the world. I would say, look at, find, find problems, find pain points, find things that, that are um, maybe heartbreaking to you because that's pain. Find, find, find yourself a reason. And for me, I don't have, I don't even have a partner. I don't have kids, but I always think of the, the childhood I had. And then I go, well, like, I don't want that for my kids. If, and when I have them, I want, I want to be able to um, provide them with this, with a really uh, empowered life. So that for me is motivation to do what I do is, is, is one day when they come into the world, I want to be in a place where I can give them this, this empowered life where they can go on and empower others too. So it's, it's that ability to find motivation. Think, think of a, a donkey. You can either whip a donkey on the butt and it will walk forward because the pain's there and it's like, ah, I'm going. Or you can dangle a carrot in front of the donkey, right? And the donkey will walk forward. So the pain gets it going or the pleasure gets it going. But remember this, as soon as you stop whipping the donkey, the donkey stops moving. And that's where people get comfortable. The pain stops, so the motivation stops. But with a carrot, it never ends because the pleasure, there's always, you can always have, you can always have more, there's always more. And I don't necessarily mean materialistically. That could be spiritually more. It could be um, mentally more, growth spiritual growth, mental, emotional growth, physical growth, financial growth, any growth, any, any, any upgrade, any better, any more is, is pleasure based. And that is the, that is the best form. I say the best, <clears throat> it's probably not the most powerful, but it is the, it is, for, it is more, um, 
It is from more of a place of wholeness. So it's like, I'm already whole, but I would like these things. And it's, and it, and it's exciting for me to go after these things. That's exciting. That's pleasure. I'll go towards it. Whereas a motivation from an un, unwhole place is pain-based. It's, it's the ego. It's, I don't have enough. I'm not enough. So I'm driven for more. That's pain-based. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. And I hope that answers your question, Natasha. What can you physically do to become more motivated is have a vision. Have, I don't know if you have a vision board. Um, I have a vision book that I read every single morning and it's got all the vision, all the things I want to achieve in my life. It's got my bucket list. It's got my career, what I want my career to look like. So when I meditate in the mornings, I have, a, I have special music that I, I listen to it and I go through my vision book. That to me is wiring those pictures into my mind so deeply that throughout my whole day, every time there's an opportunity for me to be this person, this future person, I'm just living it. I'm living it. So I would create a vision board, create a vision book, definitely have goals, all of these things to move towards. So Natasha, I hope there's a few things there. Um, that you can actually do start with a brain dump. Like, what do you want your future 20 years from now? What do you want it to look like? And then just start building that sucker every day. Um, do you believe in making monthly yearly? Oh, look, you just, <laughs> I just read that then, but yes, I do it. I do it. I have like a 20 year vision and then I have a, to, a, a list to do today. And every single thing is a step-by-step -step process to get me to that 20-year vision. And I have like a, a, a vision for my, my kid's future when I'm dead. So make sure your vision stretches beyond your lifetime as well. Make sure it stretches to humanity. Make sure your vision stretches to the whole world. That's how big we, we as I believe, that's how big we need to be thinking. Because that motivation, you can never achieve it in your lifetime. So you will never run out of motivation if it is for humanity and if it is for beyond your life awesome ramona i think i've said that right thank you for your um thank you for your comment i'm curious i'm curious team because uh, you're actually a you're a quiet you're a quiet bunch i don't know if this is if this is normal, but yes, everybody, uh, everybody that met are Serbian people, uh, but even there are more uh, people that are not Serbian, but uh, they say we are quiet. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a kind of uh, our, uh, uh, you know, behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So if you guys have no questions, then I've got some questions for you. Let's, let's see how, how well you've remembered stuff from today. What is, what is the definition? Not what are your values, but what is the def, your definition of a value? Drop that in the chat box. Yeah, I'm, I've been watching Donna very closely what's going on in the US and could probably talk about that all day. I think it actually, what's happening in the US now, it's actually, it's, it's funny, it's happening in the US, but I think it's affecting the whole globe on a deeper level than a lot of people are aware of. So what are values? Definition, what's your definition of values? You can press enter when you're ready.
are Serbian people also slow at typing? Or is that is that just me? Slavisa. Yeah. Is it uh, are Serbian people slow at typing? Uh I didn't uh, understood well. Typing. Are Serbian people slow at typing? Like oh, oh like no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know that's uh I don't believe that uh, the fastest of typing and speaking depends on uh, you know the, the fingers or tongue. It depends okay. on how fast you think <laughs> or how fast you answer. Okay. Let's see, let's see how fast they are on the next one. So my next question, what are the three ways your values can ultimately stop you achieving your goals? What are the three ways your your having incongruent values can stop you achieving your goals? This is a race. Who can get the three out the fastest? Will it be America? Will it be Serbia? Or mixed. There are some people in America that are Serbian. Oh, like Natasha. Constantinos, what is that word? Vomited. Okay, committed. Gotcha. <laughs> it's not good vomited on my violin, no? <laughs> just committed, not vomited. <laughs> okay, just committed. <clears throat> Yeah, so ultimately, they might not be in alignment with our goals. They might be pointing in a different direction. They might be two opposites, which tear our resources and our energy in, in different places. So we're less effective. Or, and, and the last way is there are towards values. I want that. But there, there is also resistance. There'll, there'll be resistance inside. Like, I want that. Ugh, but, but there's something that's stopping me. So there are three ways having misaligned values. So if you ever find yourself with any of these three, beliefs are what structure our values. So if we ever find ourselves um, in the wrong direction, we got misaligned beliefs. If we ever find ourselves torn apart, again, we'll need to change some beliefs to align them. And if we ever find ourselves you know, wanting to invest, but I don't want to lose my money. We've got some beliefs there inside of us that um, that are ultimately holding us back from being our best. So they're the three real. They're the three real ways. Um, internally, we can not be really focused, not get to that picnic on the other side of the lake because we're we're twisted. We're twisted on the inside. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. So like family growth and then family safety, those are two values that could be in conflict with each other.
Cool. So this is what I want you to do for homework. This is what I want you to do for homework is I want you to write down your, you can do this on a piece of paper after this call. I want you to sit down and just spend 10 minutes writing down what's important to you in life. And I, this is what I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be a trait or a characteristic. So I don't want it to be like focus or discipline. Those are traits and characteristics. I don't want that. I don't want it to be an emotion, which would be love, um, happiness. Okay. These, I don't want it to be them. I want it to be in between the two. So traits and characteristics we ultimately um, can embody. The emotions are known as end values. They're what we're hoping to get by completing what's in the middle. For example, trait or characteristics could be focus or discipline or strength, whatever, resilience. The, 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 the thing in the middle could be financial freedom. Okay, it could be health, it could be family. And then if I was to ask you, why is financial freedom important to you? If I kept asking, why is that important to you? And you came up with an answer. And I said, well, why is that important to you? At the end of it would be a feeling. At the end of it would be some kind of feeling, relief, joy, freedom. It would be a feeling. So I don't want you to write the feeling and I don't want you to write the characteristic or trait. I want you to write the vehicle, the vehicle in the middle. Does that make sense? It's, it's allowed to not make sense. We can do some examples. Yeah. Better do some examples. Okay. <clears throat> so we all know what traits or characteristics are, right? We'll look at, let's look at some of these values and we'll go through um, what some of, some of us wrote. So independence could be a feeling, a feeling of independence. That would be a feeling. Health is not a feeling and it's not a characteristic. So that could be a vehicle. Um, family, again, it's not a characteristic and it's not a feeling. So that could be a vehicle. I'm just looking at the chat box, by the way. So family can be the, the, the solution. Family can be the, uh, the answer. The vehicle. It's, it's, the vehicle. it's, the, yeah. means, it's the means to an end. Um, in a piece, in a piece, what's that? Feeling, right? Yeah. It's a feeling. Kids. It's not a characteristic or a trait. It's not a feeling. It's a vehicle. So I want to know the vehicles. Th these are the methods. It's literally like jumping in the vehicle to get to the end. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Travel. It's not a feeling. It's not a characteristic. It's a vehicle. Successful. Okay. Someone here wrote successful. That is a feeling. So I'll, I will feel successful. Uh, business, not a trait or characteristic, not a feeling, it's a vehicle. Financial freedom is, it's getting pretty close to a feeling. Um, it's a good one. Financial freedom is... I'm going to say financial freedom is a feeling. Okay. Financial freedom is a feeling. It's not a, it's not a, it's not like a tangible vehicle. Okay. It's not a tangible vehicle like a business, family, kids. Um, even though health isn't a tangible vehicle either. Hmm. Health, 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 I suppose. Is, would you say, I'll ask you, would you say health, healthy, Nah, I'm going to say health is okay still. Um, so integrity, trust, commitment, honesty, they're all characteristics and traits, okay? They're all characteristics. So we, 
I'm not going to let you write them. Contentment is a feeling. Better health. In that, the way you wrote it, Donna, better health, that would be a feeling. That's, that's a feeling. Healthy, more healthy. Um, financial stability. I would want to know what the vehicle would be to create financial stability. Does that make sense? So does, I, my guidelines probably aren't deadly accurate, but I'm looking for the vehicle you want to use to reach that end result. Okay. Like invest in real estate. Um, investing would be the vehicle. So it wouldn't have to be specific like real estate. Investing isn't a trait or characteristic and it's not a feeling. Um, neither is like financial stability. But financial stability is, is there's, there's only one step after that. Like if I asked Donna, why is financial stability important? What would you say, Donna? You're allowed to speak. You can unmute yourself. I think it probably would also be in line that it would bring contentment as well. If I felt, sure. and I mean, it in that level of financial stability would be different for everybody. So that's also a personal thing too. Yeah. So it would bring contentment. Yeah. Cool. So, I mean, it is in the, it is in the middle because the feel it's not really a feeling. Um, you know what? Let's, let's, yeah, let's have it as a vehicle. Let's have it as a vehicle. So if it's a feeling, it goes at the end. I don't want that. If it's a trait or a characteristic, I don't want that. If it's anything in the middle, including financial stability, it goes in the middle. And, and then I just want the top 10 of those middles. Okay. Of those middles. And then what you do is this. So you go <clears throat> top 10 and then I want you to put them in a hierarchy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. In order of importance. In order of importance. And then what I want you to do is rank them from one to ten. Rank them from one to ten. How much how much effort you're putting into that vehicle. So for example, financial stability. Um, is one, um, all of yours are feelings really, Donna. I'm going to go, if we look at Gina's here, family is one, uh, business is another. So if I said, you've got the list of 10, you've put them in order. Okay, family, one to 10, how much of your day, like how much effort are you putting into family? And then score it. And then I said, business, how much, how much effort, how much energy are you putting into business? I want you to score it and you'll go through. And once you go through and you have to do this quite objectively, otherwise you can, you can, um, you won't get the best out of it. So just be very honest. And then what we can do is we can look at that list and we can see the holes in our game. We can say, well, look, I'm spending so much time um, you know, with my family or I'm spending so much time eating food that I, I'm neglecting, I'm neglecting these other areas of my life. And I call this the life map. It's part of my book I have as well in the morning. It's my life map and it's got my, my, my top values. And I each, every single morning I go out of 10, like how much effort have I put into them recently? And then I go, you know, one of my values is, 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 um, it, like educating myself, growth, personal development. And so I'll look at it and go, you know, what? I haven't, I haven't put much effort into that into, you know, this week's gone by and I haven't put much effort into that tonight. Instead of going to the gym, I'm going to read a book. And so it allows me to keep balanced within the priorities in my life. Does that make sense? So this is why I want you to do it. I want you to do it so that you can look where you're out of balance 
because once you're living by your values, you, you'll have fulfillment. And once you are fulfilled, really, there's not much more to do. <laughs> so that's why I want you to do it. List them, hierarchy them, score them out of 10, and then make a habit of just reflecting on them. Make a habit of reflecting on them. And when something feels out in your life, when something feels out internally, go back to your values. And whether you have to write them out again or whether you have to just assess them and be like, what am I not putting effort into that I really should be putting effort into? And that can change your day just by the awareness of, oh, wow, huh, I haven't spoken to my family this week. I'm going to call my mum. And it just allows us to live in alignment. And that's how we, every, this whole game of life is inside out. So once we master the inside, the outside takes care of itself. Does anyone have any final questions before we, before we wrap this up? Cool. Some of coaches said, uh, no questions. I like it. <laughs> no, I'm not Natasha. Great question. No, so I've got my own theories and I, I'm not here to give you financial advice. That's definitely what I'm not here for, but I've got my own strategy and I'm sure we've all got our own investment strategies. Um, I, so next week I'm running my five day wealth intensive and that's, that's where we dive into more um, the investing side of it and what I'm doing. <laughs> I will not, definitely won't tell you what I'm doing specifically with my money, but I've recently just sold all my real estate. Um, and, and please do not do this. Do what you believe is best. In where I am, the house prices here are so high. I've, I've got a strategy. And it, right now, getting out of real estate, for me, is the plan. It, it could be wrong. And I'm okay with that. I think there are other asset classes that are, this is for me, I'm a very high risk person. I'm in business, very high risk, but I love it because you can make a lot of money. Cryptocurrency, very volatile, but you can make a lot of money. So that's the game I'm playing. If you don't like taking risks, if you've got, like I got no family, if I lose it all, it's just me and my dogs I have to worry about. So if you are, if you do not like taking risks, then I wouldn't play the game I'm playing, which is, you know, business, um, some trading, foreign exchange, cryptos. But I all, I've, I've got a few things going on, but I love playing in the high risk space. And I think, I think that real estate is the best long-term safe, secure investment. I truly do believe that. If you are willing to hold and hold and hold and hold and hold and hold, or you're flipping. But even when you're flipping, it, it's very active and, you know, the, the, the real key to real estate or any, any investment is to buy it on a discount. I would never buy real estate at the market price ever. I would always buy it at a discount, whether it's a mortgagee sale. Um, no, usually that's it. When someone has got themselves in a lot of trouble financially, I'll come in and, and buy. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the way for investors. So we work for, with investors as a real estate uh, brokers or an agent. We work with, with investors or this, this is uh, also motivation. What is the motivation? This is one of the things we ask when we work with our clients. And that's why, why would you like to buy something? So you are investor. You buy because you want to earn. So you are a different kind of buyer than some other that will buy uh, for having a home with a family yeah. or yeah. for some other reasons for having a business space or something else, you know? So that's, a, that's one of motivations, but I see why you are a coach because instructors are come and say the story. So that's it. That's the knowledge you accept it or not. Th this is the way, but you are talking to us. You ask each of us, what do we want? What uh, is the way of our thinking? 
And uh, it seems to me that uh, we very often avoid the questioning ourselves. So uh, it seems to me that many of us are saying, uh -huh, what I have to do tomorrow? This, 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 and this, and this, run, run, run. And then tomorrow, run. And when you ask somebody, what, even simple question, what do you, would you like to drink? Oh, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe this or that or whatever. Even so simple questions don't get a, 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 a very often don't have an answer. So if I understood well, when you do training with the people to help them to uh, achieve success, you work on their values, on their targets, on personal, that, that might be not the same as you said, for real estate, it's not the same reason why you buy real estate and, for example, why, why I will buy real estate. So that, that, that's different from person to person. So if I understood well the way of your coaching, or maybe we should do the same, you'd give us a, a homework to ask ourselves about all of these important questions and to find the answer. And then while we, uh, we are on the road to to get something, we are on the road to, uh, to our targets. Am I right uh, how I understand your story? Can you frame that in a simple question? Oh, yeah. What's the, que <laughs> what's the question? So, yeah, uh, it's not a question. It's some, uh, my question is if I understood well, we have often to ask ourselves to define the values, the targets, <laughs> that's is it what we have to do? Yes. Yes. If, if we don't know our values, we, we, we cannot be good decision makers. We will be at the effect of other people's opinions. We'll be at the effect of the environment. If we know what's important to us, it gives us the conscious power to decide, I'm going to spend my money on this. I'm going to spend my time on this. So yes, the more you can question yourself and what drives you, the more control you're going to have and the more success you're going to have in your life. Yeah, because uh, very often we do, you don't have a fast re, uh, answer. For example, if you ask me, where do you live? I would say immediately, Serbia, niche. But if you ask me some other question, I don't answer fast. So I didn't find the answer maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure about the answer. Maybe that's, yeah. that's why we uh, answer slowly on such a questions. 100%. Because if we will make people, it to, yeah. Yeah, well, a lot of people just don't know themselves. They, they, they think they know themselves, but they really don't. And knowing, knowing your core values is so important. It's the first line of work I do with everybody. Because if people do not know what matters to them, they are, they're going to be a pushover and they're going to become a product instead of a producer. Yeah, that's, that's the way we, uh, we often work with us, ourselves. Don't get the answer on very important question for us. And Ask then yourself that, this. This is the most important question. This is the yes. most important question. Yeah. And Who the next am I step really? Is, Who am I really? Yeah. And who am I really? And what is the meaning of my life? Those are the two questions. It, when you ask them enough times, often just keep getting to the bottom of those two questions. Who am I really? And what is the meaning of my life? That's where you're going to find the deepest parts of yourself. Answering to that question is actually giving you the target in the, what Natasha said. Can we plan for five or 10 years? As the way to do it. Actually, we did. For example, when I decided to uh, finish university, that was the plan for five years. So every day I was having to go to study and then to finish whatever uh, needed to finish my plan for five years. Why would I do that? Because I wanted to be an engineer. That's a plan for 10 years. Or uh, to be, uh, I don't know, the, the uh, leading engineer, whatever, R&D manager, whatever. So that's the plan for 15 years. Mm -hmm. And this target uh, give me what will I do tomorrow or today? Yep. 
uh, okay, John, uh, it seems that we have to come back to questioning as uh, uh, maybe next time we, we speak together, we will give fast answers. So this will uh, say we have clarified what are the ans answers for a big questions like what is my target in life? What is the if value? If you do not know what the meaning of your life is, then you need, to, you need to quit your job. You need to go into the jungle or the bush or the mountains and you need to sit with a pen and paper and figure out what the fuck you're doing. But when, when we do uh, the targeting, uh, I understand you, uh, you uh, achieved a very high achievements. So uh, that's because I went. That's because that's because I went. I went into. I I very often I go and I hire a cabin in the woods by myself, and I go with my pen and paper, and I ask the questions: Who am I? What am I doing with my life? I look at the planet. What's important? And I plan my life by myself, away from what other people think. And I ask the question: What's really true? Is working a nine to five how I want to work? No, it's not. No get fucked is it important to me to help other people yes it is in fact i think that's probably the 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 pinnacle of life is helping other people so it's about really ask, asking these questions and not being influenced by other people's opinions as soon as we are influenced by someone else's opinions we're being taken away from ourselves and what really matters so to take our risk and take our uh, accountability our responsibility for for what we want to do Okay, John, your training, how long is, uh, when you do a training with, uh, you, uh, with, your, with the people that would like to be, uh, to find the answers for their question, how long, how long you, you make it? Uh, do you have training for, do we need a training with you, for example, to solve our uh, mindset and our goals? My training and, program, my training program yes. is 12 months long. 12 months. So we have to 12 work 12 months to, uh, establish uh our... no, no 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 it never ends the work never ends the the day you die you're still asking the questions who am i really okay so the work never ends my program is 12 months long because people come and they do a webinar and they get some information but nothing changes and maybe they do a two-day course and a little bit changes but mm, i don't like that when i change people i like their whole life to change I don't want someone to be a little bit successful. I want them to be wildly successful. So I need them for 12 months. So if they try to run away, they can't escape. So that when the, you know, you go for like a month and you think, oh, I'm fine. And then they go and then a month later, their, their lives a mess. I need, I need them for 12 months because people sabotage themselves. They run away, especially when people get outside of their comfort zone, they get, they get pushed and fear kicks in and they just go back to being the old person. That's why I have them for 12 months. Cause I hold them and I'm like, no, go that way. Go. So yeah, it's, it's 12 months of continuous. What, what's true. What's true to me. Why have, why do I believe this healing past trauma? We learn our values and beliefs from our, from our upbringing. So I take people back to the start and say, look at this, look at how you became you. Do you want to choose a different you? Because this is how you became you and it's not really as effective as it could be. Do you want to change it? Yes. Okay. Make the changes in the past. And then when you heal, you heal the child, you heal the boy, and then you become the man, right? And that journey is difficult and it's, it's, there's, it's sad. It's emotional. It's traumatic. And so it takes a long time. It takes a long time. Uh, uh, does everybody stay till the end? Yeah. yeah. Well, they, 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 they pay me a lot of money. So yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 stay they have the to stay <laughs> till the end. But what it happened because I, as I understood in the beginning, you are making something like doctor do a uh, laboratory in the beginning because they, give you a prescriptions. Uh, is it happening that uh, this beginning uh, target of them changed through training with you? 
What do you mean? Ah, uh, I mean, today I want to have a Ferrari, for example. But when I'm doing one year for, with you, I said, Ferrari is not important. Something else yes. is more important. I changed yes. my target. Yes. Okay. Not always, but, but sometimes. Not always, but sometimes it's happening. Okay. Uh, is anybody have any other question I didn't ask uh, John while we have him uh, with us? Okay. Uh, I would say thank you to everybody for participating. I was trying to bring uh, somebody that I was impressed uh, with uh, when I was uh, attending his uh, uh, webinars before. And I hope uh, you enjoyed today and you get some inspiration how to put yourself not to give up on being the best of you can in your life and uh, showing our, uh, the way how to find the best of, of us and to achieve it. And that is possible to do it. Uh, I hope this was supporting. And thank you, John, for being with us, for sharing uh, your experience and uh, giving us this introduction very well, uh, this uh, introduction to what you do to prepare the people to be successful and to achieve the best of their lives. I hope everybody enjoyed this and uh, thank you. Be thank you. I just want to say as well, like, just for everyone, Aim higher than you think you should. Aim higher than you think you should. You, because what happens is that we have limitations, but they're self-imposed. And so we, we can stay in this bubble of like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing good in my life. It's like, well, no, you could do great. And there is nothing stopping you doing great, whether it is financially, whether it is with your family, whether it is with anything, there's nothing stopping you doing great apart from yourself. So I want you to, for the rest of today, I don't know what time it is. I don't actually care if it keeps you up all night tonight. I want you to start thinking about where you're actually not being fucking great. Where are you just settling? What are your standards for yourself? <clears throat> and like, if you look at them and reflect of them, could they be better? Are you actually okay with your standards or have they just kind of been imposed on you? And if you're not okay with it, what are you going to do about it? Because it's very easy to stay comfortable. It's very easy to stay the same. It's very easy <clears throat> to be you. Like you're just being you. But why not push the status quo? It doesn't have to be in all areas of life, but just one. Where are you... Where is there a little bit of desire that maybe you've repressed? And I say this because when one person sets themselves free and stops limiting themselves, it's not about the it's not about the abundance, it's about the energy, it's about the feeling and it's about what you do for the planet. When we stop limiting ourselves, when there are no limits, like I fucking go for it no matter what it is, no matter who's going to judge me. That gives other p people permission to do the same. And so I want you to look at your, uh, just today, just spend time today saying, what are the standards I've set for myself? And, and can, I, can I set a higher standard for myself? Physically, with my health, with my money? I, and yeah, like I said, I, you know what? I, I hope it keeps you up all night. I hope it bugs you until you make a change. That's what I hope. So. I'm just going to cast a voodoo spell. Yeah. And, and I hope you get, <laughs> I hope you, this, this just eats at you until you decide, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm not going to play the game I've been playing. I'm going to turn up the dial. I'm going to turn up the temperature and something is going to shift. That's all I have for you. So we have not to be afraid of being the best of us. And, uh, to get, give the answers and to change it, to do whatever we need to do, but to be the best we can. Here's this. We've all got, I don't know what your religious beliefs are, but humans are way too human. We've got God running through us. We have got divinity running through us. And a lot of the time we sit behind computers or we do, we just, we self-limit. When we are really eternal 
freaking beings of light. Think about that. Think about what's possible. And when you go for your next run or exercise, go further than you've ever been before because you can. When it comes to growing your wealth, grow it so abundantly because you can. We lost you. I lost you. The microphone. Battery. Battery. Okay, so we can. <laughs> Even when battery die, we can do what uh, uh, the best in our lives. And it is possible, I think, uh, John, maybe our inspiration for, for me, he was certainly inspiration to, to achieve anything and not to give up uh, at all, never. So people, don't give up ever. Make the best of yourself and go ahead find the values change the values do wh whatever you do whatever you need but do the best you can john thank you very much for being with us i believe you inspired all of these people and the people that will watch uh, later on i say to everybody stay active stay safe but today i would say keep respect and love in your heart believe to yourself and ourselves and Let's do the best of what we can. I love you all. All the best. Thank you, John.